would love to fight for victories. That's my target. But we know that on this rally, sometimes uh, you shouldn't push too much because you have to save your car. So I'll, I'll do my best to, to stay out of trouble. It's my first time here in Kenya and first time in Safari Rally. So it's going to be really exciting. I'm uh, really thinking it's going to be a difficult event with many things what we have never seen before in a rally car, but it's going to be uh, quite nice. It's fantastic. I mean, I've never seen so many crowds and people all over Nairobi, all over the country. It's good for the country. It's good for tourism. It's just good to get Kenya out there as a sort of a top brand, which is, uh, it's great. It's incredible. Just can't believe it's, it's really happening. Um, from the flag off now and seeing the people lined up on the side of the streets and seeing the big professionals and world champions here, it's, um, it's a big dream for us. After a 19-year break, Kenya's iconic safari rally is back on the WRC calendar. The rally attracted young and new drivers and veteran drivers for a three-day rally through 18 stages of unforgiving terrain. With dust, mud and wild animals, the safari rally has in its 67-year history become a household name in Kenya and recognition as the toughest rally in the world. The first safari rally was held in 1953 to celebrate the first anniversary of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. A group of rally enthusiasts organized it as a tribute to the new queen and for every year after that, there has been a rally. Ten years after the first rally, Kulwant China participated and his children Ravi and Jasmine have fond memories of it. We come from a wrong family of uh, rally drivers, starting way back from our father who did the coronation safari in 1963. In 1960, it was renamed the East African Safari Rally and kept the name until 1974, when the rally gained global attention and was included as the only African rally in the World Rally Championship. I remember one time we were going up, climbing up the Mao Escarpment, going towards uh, Mount Rock from Elmantaita. And suddenly I noticed the oil pressure dropping and luckily I stopped, switched off the car in time. To go out and to look, I was shocked. My oil filter had burst and I'm in the safari rally. Would you believe one of the spectators zoomed up there with his Datsun, told me, take out this filter from my car. Will it work for you? Put it on your car, go. So within about, I think, uh, 20 minutes, we were in action again, back up. Luckily, I was carrying oil in the car. We have uh, many fond memories of the safari. Uh, first of all, is uh, the first safari that I finished in 1994 as the 10th overall. And um, I remember the five days uh, driving for uh, 5,000 kilometers. I mean, it was completely a different experience from what we have today. The safari rally is termed as the world's toughest rally and a victory on the circuit is coveted. How do you describe extreme happiness? You know, you, do, you are like you are in, you are floating, you are in another world. <laughs> no, you, you won't. Really? I won't? <laughs> you know, pinch, pinch. <laughs> so it's, um, it was a really fantastic uh, feeling. Up to now, it is something both uh, George and me cherish, uh, that, that drive and that win. To win the rally was really great. That's something we tried to do for years and years. It was something that we'd always, every person wants to do. Famed for its tough driving conditions, the safari rallies run as one of the centerpieces of the WRC calendar came to a halt in 2002 when it was excluded from the WRC calendar due to a lack of financial guarantees and organizational concerns. The KCB group stepped in from 2003 to sponsor the rally, working with then newly established Kenya Motorsports Federation to bring order in the running of rallying in Kenya. KCB and KMSF were boosted by the commitment made by President Uhuru Kenyatta in 2013 when he pledged to bring the WRC event back. As we look forward to five more years of the WRC, the KCB group has affirmed its commitment farther. So we can give you a commitment that KCB will remain in the rally for the foreseeable future. It's not just Kenya that has been out of WRC, it's the entire continent of Africa for 19 years. And mine is to thank the government of Kenya, led by His Excellency Uhuru Muge Kenyatta, who has um, made it um, possible to actually get this event back. KCB Bank has supported motorsports fraternity for the past 18 years, sponsoring the Kenya National Rally Championship and the Safari Rally. The bank has over the past 18 years spent 1.2 billion Kenya shillings on the rally and has worked with organizers to restore the glory of the safari rally. We believe that through that you can create in 
open up opportunities for Kenya. Just look at this event today. Look at how many people have come. Look at this city. And it's not just a Kenyan event. It's also an African event. Six billion dollars worth of value is created by just these two, three day events. And for me, that is the contribution we are making as a business. If KCB did not step in after we lost the WRC status, it would have meant that there would be no safari to revive or to generally sell to WRC or to FI. So, uh, in essence, KCB made sure that motorsports was at its best in Kenya. For many Kenyans, this brought back the nostalgia of the safari rally, without which the Easter holidays were not complete. This is such an amazing event and we're really having a good time. I have like a whole group of friends who are visiting from other countries. We have a group from California, we have a group from Zambia, we have a group from London. So we are all celebrating this event and they've all come down just for this. So WRC, you're here to stay, man. When I was growing up, uh, our home was near A104, so every Easter, Safari Rally was a big thing, we'd patch on the fence and we'd count the cars as they passed. And for those who had not experienced the Safari Rally before, the excitement was high. It's been great like seeing all the cars and the different racers like drive and see their tactics and how they drive. It's so exciting, I'm meeting new friends. Uh, actually, people are explaining to me. I, I don't understand anything, but I'm enjoying the speed. <laughs> I have never attended a rally before. Seeing as they came from here, has dedicated to coming, and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it totally. In the weeks leading to the start of the 2021 WRC Safari Rally, crews got busy fine-tuning the cars. The preparations are major because of the WRC being two stages longer. So we're taking the extra precaution of uh, rebuilding the engine, the gearbox, the diffs, going through the car thoroughly to make sure everything is working perfectly fine. We've tried to do everything that we can on the car. We've worked on the suspension and everything. And uh, yet again, we're still building the car towards the WRC. Rallying is an expensive activity and most drivers depend on corporates for sponsorship. They play a very big role, especially for us privateers. Uh, I'm very, very honored to have uh, KCB come on and sponsor us. Government can, do, can, can make an investment into the organization, the arrangements and all that. Uh, but we need people who can sponsor our drivers. And so we're calling on uh, anybody who uh, feels that this has been an, ex an experience that they want to enjoy again, uh, to really come out and uh, support our drivers. The 2021 WRC Safari Rally revved off with a ceremonial start at the Kenyatta International Convention Center. This year's event attracted a lot of interest from international teams and the Kenyan aces were not left behind. We discarded Toyota Yaris, so we're going to compete for the first time here in, uh, in Kenya, so we are very, very happy. I'm targeting top, uh, well, to beat Onka, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but no, look, our expectations are to try and beat all the R5s to be in the, on the podium of the, on, on the WRC. As it is tradition, the flag off was officiated by the head of state, President Uhuru Kenyatta. The future belongs to those who believe in their dreams. We have dreamed and we have indeed delivered. We planned and we succeeded and through our collective efforts, it is now certain that the greatest show in motorsport in Africa will continue to thrill and inspire long into the future. The first day's action took place just outside the Moy International Sports Center at Kasarani for a run through the 8.4-kilometer Kasarani Super Special Stage, giving a chance to the Nairobi fans to enjoy the rally before it went to Nakuru County for the next three days. Sebastian Augier and his co-driver Julian Incrasia took the lead. I enjoy it. I simply enjoy what I do. And uh, I think in life when you enjoy what you do, it's the uh, best way to, to do it uh, on, the, on the top level. The three-day circuit in Nakuru County was a great show as the drivers took their cars through the 18 stages that made up the toughest rally in the world. We've missed it. I'm a car fanatic. We watch Formula One, uh, we watch the MotoGP, but now to see the World Rally on our home soil, I think that's, that's really amazing. 
For most of the Kenyan drivers, the stages were not new, but the 320 km rally still had its surprises. Kenya's Tij Rai was among the unlucky ones as he rolled at the Kidong stage. We are excited to see most of the cars, uh, but uh, we were saddened by one car from Cabras yesterday that uh, crashed. Uh, we we'll say sorry to the family, but we are happy that WRC is back. Still, the local drivers set a sizzling pace with at least three drivers in the top 10 in all stages. Among them were three young Kenyans who have just joined the FIA Rally Star program. Jeremy Wahome, Hamza Anwar and Makre Kimathi were happy to get in the action. It's the toughest event I've ever done and I mean I've done the East African Classic. I did the Equator Rally which was treacherous with mud, but this event just had it all. It was really tough, but we managed to bring the new Ford Fiesta to the end. It was very enjoyable. Um, didn't have much expectation. Uh, very different field, first time rallying. So the main thing was just to finish and, and remember to enjoy yourself. I had fun. The result was also good, which was a bonus, but it was fun and tiring in the end. We were 16th in Sleeping Warrior. I think first in our class. I think we won like three four stages in our class. I think Sunday is when I really started to pick up the pace, when I started to understand the car much better. Nurturing a new generation of drivers is critical as they hold the key to the future of motorsport in Kenya. Our vision for sport is to create much more younger people involved. And the more the competition is global, our own drivers are able to push. The final day was full of fun for thousands who turned up to cheer, see the rally teams for themselves. Some teams made it to the finish, some did not, but it was an unforgettable experience for all. The winners of the 69th edition of the toughest rally of the WRC calendar were Sebastian Auger, navigated by Julian Ingracia. Today uh, it's a great week for us. I think after our trouble on Friday, we had a really good weekend. We had really good pace and car was amazing. And our local drivers were not left out of the top 10. On Karai, navigated by Drew Starok, took position 7. Karan Patel, navigated by Tausif Khan, finished 8th. While five-time Safari Rally champion Carl Flash Tundo, navigated by Team Chesop, took the 9th position. And so, after 19 long years, the Safari Rally is back on the WRC calendar, and Kenyans can dare dream. We have agreed with the international Automobile Federation, as well as the World Rally Championship, to continue hosting the Safari Rally in Kenya every year until the year 2026. Our commitment for the next 10 years is to make sure that we make this one of the best rally as competitive as what you see in other series. Congratulations, Sebastian Ocean and Julian Sebastian!